Hello, my name is Jeremy, and this is my second Townsea Tools video, where I am going to be continuing and showing you how to use the shapes made in MetaMaker and the Architect tool to create entire structures. So, the first thing we're going to do is load the Architect tool, which can be done from the title screen or directly within MetaMaker. And I will show you why it's valuable to be able to do that in a moment. So the architect tool looks a lot more sparse than the MetaMaker tool to start with, but uh, you can see we have a large grid here with a positioning and a reticule and a default selected shape, which appears to be a uh, scrap stone with a window in it, and that's fine. We're going to select the Tudor wall that we just finished making in the previous video. And you can see that down here, we have our Tudor wall selected. So here we have a few different options for how we want to position things. I'm gonna press G, which if you look on the top right here, G is the hotkey for snapping. Right now we're on no snapping. This option snaps us to the grid and this option snaps us to existing structures. If you press and hold the Z key, you'll see little spheres that mark where the snapping points are. So um, that can be helpful when we get rolling. First, I'm gonna put us on grid. This is perfectly acceptable for making a starting structure. So we're just gonna make a simple, like a three by three house, I think. So you don't have to start with walls, but since we have this selected, that's how we're gonna start. So we're gonna just click to position. We're gonna put three walls side by side with our ends touching. Now we're going to use the A and D keys to rotate our piece, which rotates in 15 degree increments, always. So uh, it's not possible to get more finer increments than that, but I think 15 degrees should be able to give you everything you need. So now we're going to position three walls here as well. And this particular piece is symmetrical, so the inside and the outside look the same. I'm gonna flip it around anyway, just for some habit, I guess. And we need a door here. We haven't made a door yet. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to call this our Tudor house. We're gonna save that structure. And then we're gonna click over here to go back into the MetaMaker. And you can see that since we worked on this piece most recently, it automatically loaded it back up. And if we click to go back into the architect tool, you can see our house is still here. It's the same house that we were working on before because we saved it. If you didn't save it, then it wouldn't still be there. Um, so we're going to go back into the MetaMaker and uh, this is where you would load up the door template, make adjustments to this and then go back into Architect, put a door in. For the time being, I'm going to use a door that's already been made, which is going to be this mixed scrap door, which has some stone in it. It's not matching up real well with the Tudor style, but that's okay, that'll be for you to, for you to experiment with. So we're gonna put that there. And now we're going to go and choose an actual door to put in the door frame. I'm going to use this Tupelo door because we've we've uh, used the Tupelo wood in our framing here, so it's, it'll be a good match. Now, we're on grid right now, so the door the door wants to connect to the grid, but we want the door to connect to the door frame. So put our snapping on structure, and then you can see where all the little snapping points are, and we're just going to pop that right into the door frame, no problem. Make sure the door is closed when you put it in, by the way. You can rotate the doors, but I don't want it closed for perhaps obvious reasons. And we're gonna pick some flooring, and we've got some scrap stone tiles here. And then some scrap lumber, some heavy stone. Let's use the scrap stone floor tiles. They seem pretty good. Um, we could position this either with the structure snapping or with the grid, but let's use the structure snapping for now since we're already in that mode. Just gonna fill this space in here. Piece of 
cake. We now have some flooring inside our Tudor house. Next, what we're going to do, I think we'll get a little bit fancy with this just so that you can get some idea of what's available. So we're going to maybe put a pitched roof, but in such a way where it's sort of um, not uniform. So we're going to pick some roofing here, and uh, we'll use the scrap roofing for now. Uh, if you use the W and S keys, you can increase the height. So that's how we are going to get up to our second level. And then we're going to pitch this roof this way. Zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to go up even higher to put this one like this. So this is going to be kind of a weirdly shaped house, but that's fine. And uh, that should be it for the roofing pieces that we'll need. Now we're going to start selecting more walls. So we're going to put this wall here. And this wall here. And just to be fancy, I think we're going to put the ones with the windows on the very top. So we'll rotate that around stick those on there it'll be like our ventilation slash skylight this is gonna be an ugly house but that's okay you'll see how it was put together now you see we've got these sort of triangular holes that we have to fill so we're gonna choose a triangular wall wedge we're gonna rotate that around and st stick it in the places where it needs to go friggin' weird building. So maybe, maybe this building, maybe the reason why it's shaped like this is, uh, I don't know, maybe we want a patio or something up there. So that can be done easily enough. And then uh, if we don't want it just sticking out like that, I find that using the double door frame is often a very good way to add visible support structures to things. They're designed for you to put double doors in, but there's no reason why you can't just use them as a support. So yeah, there we go. It is not the most impressive house, but it is a house. Um, and we don't really have any way to get up to that patio right now. In fact, let's extend the patio just to sort of really beat this horse to death. Oops. Oh yes, you can go below grade um, with your building and that is mostly for if you are expecting to build this house over water or extremely rough terrain, you would put some supports extending below grade because that is what's going to be visible um, in the water. Um, this game does not have in-depth physics when it comes to buildings and what can be placed where and what would realistically collapse and so on. So. Uh, again, if you're going to be using this tool, then you're clearly somebody who cares about what your buildings look like, and you're going to want the extra support structure extending down into the water so that it doesn't look like your house is floating. Unless you feel like creating a village of floating houses, in which case, go nuts. Whatever. I'm not going to trample your dreams. Now let's, uh, let's put this back up. And we're going to add, that's not at all in the right spot. 
perspective really screwed me up. But this is a good opportunity to demonstrate another feature, which is simply mouse over the same position and press the delete key and that goes away. You can also place shapes directly on top of other shapes to make them go away or close enough to it. If I were to turn off the grid altogether so that I can just freely place things and oh crap, I placed something there. I don't have to be directly on top of it to delete it. I can just be sort of close. But if I was sort of close and I just want it moved a little bit, instead of deleting it and replacing it, I can just replace it and it'll move. Like whenever you place, that one's a little too close. But if you place two objects really close together, any objects that are already in that spot will be deleted. So handy to know. Now uh, we're gonna put some stairs so that we can actually access our beautiful patio up here. I'm going to rotate that around and uh, put our snapping back on structures so everything should match up nicely. And there you have it. This is a really ugly building. But you at least get the idea of how you would go about constructing something. And then once you're finished, everything is saved and, uh, and you're good to go. So you can again flip quickly back and forth between the MetaMaker and the Architect. Um, oh, it's saved under a slightly different name. I'll, I'll have that fixed momentarily. But you can flip quickly back and forth in order to be able to, uh, if you are working on a piece and you don't like how it looks on the building, you can flip back to MetaMaker, tweak it slightly, come back to, into Architect, and that change will be reflected on your structure when it is reloaded. So you can sort of quickly zip back and forth, get things the way you want them, and uh, you can uh, fine tune and perfect your house that way. The open folder button here, by the way, will open the folder where all of your where all of your structures are saved on your local computer. So you can use that to delete things or rename them or whatever. Um, I guess that's about it. Everything else you should uh, probably be able to figure out by just messing with things. Um, oh, we have nudging controls over here, so if you're working on your building and you accidentally strayed too close to the edge and you need more space, you can center automatically, or you can nudge by specific amounts. Oh, I also highly recommend that you do not create entire communities with this tool. The architecture tool should be used for creating individual structures, and the player should then be the one deciding how to make those structures relate to one another. If you want to make a gigantic communal apartment building or something, go ahead, but just be warned that the larger and more complicated your buildings are, the harder it will be for players to actually fit them into the game world when that time comes. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and that's about it for now. This is available to download and play with through a link that I will leave in the footnotes of the video. If you have questions or concerns that come up while using the tool, please feel free to comment on the video. Um, I am still working on all of this actively, so things are likely to change quickly and potentially dramatically, and requests and concerns will help me make the tool better, so please feel free. Until, uh, until I have something else to report, I guess that's it for now. So have fun playing with the tools. I hope this was helpful, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.